of the imagination and how the same cometh into its exaltation by paracelsus fourteen ninety three to fifteen forty one translated by robert turner in sixteen fifty six this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit librivox dot org what powerful operation the imagination hath and how the same cometh to its height and exaltation may be seen by an example taken from experience in the time of pestilence wherein the imagination poisoneth more than any infected air and against which no antidote neither of mithridite nor trickle nor any such preservative can exhibit any help unless that such an imagination do pass away and be forgotten nothing else will help so quick and swift a runner and messenger is the imagination that it doth not only fly out of one house into another out of one street into another but also most swiftly passeth from one city and country into another for that by the imagination only of one person the pestilence may come into some whole city or country and kill many thousands of men as may be understood by this example put case there were two brethren dearly loving one another and one of them lives in france and the other travels into italy who is taken away by the pestilence in the middle way the news should be brought to the brother there living in france that his brother in italy has died of the plague at which he being affrightened it pierces through his skin into his imagination so that he cannot forget it and it is kindled in him and this fire does so long reverberate and work as it may be seen in the trial of gold and silver which do send forth their flowers so long until they shine bright again which is not before they are perfectly clear and separated from the impure metals after the same manner also the imagination striketh back and worketh itself unto the highest degree after there will be relucency thereof now it is received in a vessel in the man as the sperm of a man is received in the matrix of the woman whereby the conception of the woman immediately follows so doth the pestilence go from one to another so long till it spread over a whole city or country it is good therefore to keep far off not because of any corrupt or infected air for it infects not the air as some ignorant people say but that they may not see or hear the operations of the pestilence which may infect their minds but those people to whom any such news is reported as before said ought not to be left alone neither must they be suffered to muse silently with themselves whereby the imagination may labor in their minds but they are to be comforted and the imagination is to be expelled from their minds by exciting them to mirth and joy neither let any think that i speak this as a fable for though it should seem to be a light business neither is the remedy so easy for oppressed imaginations for the imagination is as it were pitch which easily cleaveth and sticketh which being kindled is not so easily extinguished wherefore the only remedy to resist the pestilence in such men is to quench and expel the force of the imagination this is one example wherein the power and operation of the imagination is declared with the exhalations thereof but now to speak of another example know that the imagination doth not only operate on men in time of pestilence and to deprive many of their lives but also in war how many have perished in war with the fear of the shot the cause of whose death hath been only their imagination which they have had unto their death that is they have been so greatly overwhelmed with fear and so terrified at every shot that they thought no otherwise but that they should be wounded with every dart such men are far oftener slain than those that are bold who go courageously and without fear against their enemies 
they fear no shot or wound but have a firm faith and hope of victory beyond the other soldiers such are stout and true soldiers how many towers castles cities and countries have such warred against and overcome and vanquished the people thereof but the other that are fearful whether they be great or little noble or ignoble knights earls or others do scarce deserve a half penny to go against an enemy much less any wages wherefore it becometh him that desireth to be an old soldier or to gain knighthood or any honour in war to fix and fasten his mind and imagination firmly on some most excellent stout head and leader of an army such as julius caesar and many amongst the romans have been and by so doing if he know how to use this imagination well and be of a firm and constant mind and as he if would attain to and accomplish all the heroic noble acts of such a man he shall not only attain to be an old soldier but shall accomplish his desires in attaining to the like honours this has suddenly happened to many who have followed the process of their imagination so that they have attained to great honour and riches End of of the imagination and how the same cometh into its exaltation by paracelsus fourteen ninety three to fifteen forty one translated by robert turner in sixteen fifty six